Okay, Saturday, twen Saturday, 14th of January now. And actually, when this vlog is uploaded, I believe that will be Monday. But today, tonight, we're going to have our first official recording session. See how that goes. We once have to start. And of course, tuning time. I will try to connect the vlogs more with the date of the real recordings and <clears throat> that's not so easy actually but anyway i know what you're thinking now what temperament are you going to use <laughs> that is perhaps the single most asked question and um, the question that gets of gets the the fewest answers okay perhaps i'll talk about that a little bit i believe it's it's way less complicated than people would like you to believe just do some research i would say and not listen too much to perhaps the stories of the first generation hip musicians maybe delicate to say but i think it's like that we should do our own research and make our own conclusions anyway above is a concert by two little girls five year and eleven year it's saturday so you will be witnessing a little bit of that. Anyway, before I start tuning, the reason, one of the reasons that I really, no, and actually if I go one step further back, the reason that we are now with Authentic Sound where we are, so not only a YouTube channel, but a recording label, and actually we're thinking of building a studio is all because of the partitas, because I wanted to record the partitas for a long time and actually when I, in fact when I decided to go analog, that's another other chapter, I was thinking on making a record, recording in Abbey Road Studios, you know that's the famous recording studio where also the Beatles recorded their albums and by the way the person who did the restoration of my studio tape recorder was at the time when I was in Switzerland, so Andreas Kuhn was doing a restoration of the Tube Studer tape recorders, I think it's the C37 or the GDAR37, I don't remember. But those three machines, and one of those machines was used to record Sgt. Pepper, so there's a really historical tape recorder. And I thought, well, when I went, when I would go over there and do the recording of the partitas, I have I, I will be able to put on my disc on the records recorded in every road. But then I contacted Happy Road Studios and <clears throat> they replied that first scheduled for a meeting with them in the UK in order to see if we would fit their studio. So it costed a fortune and then I was thinking the recordings that I've made in the past in on location is so stressy this instrument now only need very few adjustments and tuning because it's so stable it's incredibly stable well when we, we, we try to humidify now it's winter time but overall nothing happens to the clavier coat if it's closed when the windows is open are open for getting some air in, in the house so it really is very stable and more than that the less you touch on the temperament, on the temperament and on the tuning, the better the instrument is going to sound. So tuning is very good for an instrument, but if it does, if the instrument doesn't need tuning, it opens, and that's my feeling. But in the bass, things happen always, and that's something to adjust now. So to avoid that stress, the idea came just to record at home. We have a nice room here, you know that. And but that then of course it's the sound problem. You have airplanes, you have 
wind, you have rain, you have the traffic noise of the street. So all to say that the reason that I'm recording now at home is also because of the fact that it gives so um, much less stress than when I would do the recording on location. I would have limited time. There would um, for sure other people involved and that's another thing. I'm here totally on my own with Anya, so we, we know each other very well. I do not have to talk to the recording engineer, which by times is a good thing to have because it's, it takes a, he or she takes a lot of work out of, of your hands as a musician, but you have to talk to them, there you get input and that's not what I want. Um, I want to be on my own witness by you in the live streams, that's perfect but not explain or not go into a kind of conversation on what I'm doing because it's in my head that it's happening. And here I feel totally at rest, at ease. If things don't go like I want, I just close it like a court and there is another session, another day. So that's, for me, one of the conditions to reach a level that I want to reach, just to find my point of zero, my zenith, so to say. So tuning now. See the bass? It's just a little bit high. It's too low. Not too much. Great thing on a clavichord that you can try before you tune. Just press a little bit harder, the pitch goes up. So on the temperament, I will do a series on temperaments. I'm far from the from being a specialist, but this instrument will go in Werkmeister 17.7. Maybe you do some research on that, and we talk about that later. And do also some research on early 18th century temperaments. There's there are articles online, and information is available today in a way that we never had before. So Werkmeister 77 is his latest temperament. So um, released, actually published a year after his death. And I believe that's a perfect temperament for J.S. Bach and every musician, composer in that time that was progressive and progressive meant to want to play in 24 keys. That's actually very simple definition. So Werkmeister rejected with his last temperament all his previous ones. So even there was a connection with books to it also and his previous one I think 1696 or something like that. So he made a new one two years after having a, had a visit from Walter. So there is the smell of J.S. Bach and the name of that temperament is really interesting. And once you realize that connection with that name that Werkmeister gave to his temperament, you start to um, feel, is that a good English show to look through some early music mystification stories. It's really simple. It's very personal though, and we had, had 60 years now of all kinds of temperaments. And yet when you talk to people, there's, I'm always surprised how little will research has been done. You have some perfect tuners and musicians, of course, that goes together. But overall, there's a lot of discussion without a lot of research. It's very personal again. It's about color. It's about what you like. But if you would, go, would like to go to the facts, and do some research. I think Werkmeister 17.7 is the perfect temperament for Bach, also for the World Tempered Clavier. So go check that out. I will come back later to, to, to the temperament of Werkmeister and why I'm using that. So there's a history on that. No tuning time. Oops, that's not good. <laughs> Okay, that sounds good. Up to the recording session tonight. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing as always, following this project, and we see each other very soon again.
Bye.